Hello everyone, welcome back. And I wanted to share with you all something that I've been thinking about and I know a lot of you have experienced it or know someone who has. See, many women around the world have experienced or they are currently experiencing what it's like to be pregnant. Now men, this message does not exclude you because oftentimes you are right there beside your wife seeing what she is going through or you have a friend or family member that is pregnant. See, our faith and our prayer life is oftentimes like a woman's pregnancy. I know many of you are like wondering, what does she mean by this? How is it possible? See, just like pregnancy, our faith has a seed that's planted. That seed is covered in darkness, just like the embryo is covered in darkness in the womb. See, the seed in the embryo is not forgotten. God is nourishing you and working on the very miracle He created inside of you. See, as the woman progresses through her pregnancy, she starts to see growth and changes to her body. We too see changes when it comes to our faith. Now, as we go through life, we face many obstacles and those obstacles can hinder our faith. See, like a woman being pregnant, she must take care of herself watch any obstacles that may be in her way that could cause her harm, and she must nourish herself to care for the miracle she's carrying inside. See, our faith is tested every day, yet the seed that we planted will grow as we continue to nourish it. Our way of nourishing ourselves, our body, mind, and spirit is through prayer and believing the Word of God. See, there was a time that I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And there was a time that my husband and I were in a serious car wreck with our nine-day-old daughter. And my husband suffered serious injuries to his spine and knees that required him to have surgery and relearn to walk again. And then there was a time that I was betrayed by a very close friend that I considered a sister. And then there was a time that I had more bills than I had money. And then there was a time that life was so overwhelming I just wanted to end it all. So in each of these situations, no matter how painful, how annoying, how debilitating my situation was, my response and only response to every circumstance was to pray until something happened. Pushing prayer, 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 praying when the doctor told me I had cancer, praying when my family was in a wreck, praying when I walked beside my husband and he learned to walk again, Praying even when I wanted to end it all. Sometimes I would be praying when I was crying. Sometimes I would be screaming in my house in prayer. Sometimes I would be sitting in my car on the interstate praying my situation. Praying because my situation just, just felt out of control. See, just like a woman that is pregnant, she's carrying a precious miracle. That precious miracle is not only just your life, but it's your faith in God. See, when a pregnant woman is near birth, she often experiences what we call pre-labor pains, cramping, contractions. See, the more you push and push prayer in your life and press into God, you will often experience similar pains. You won't experience cramping and contractions, but you'll experience temptations. You'll experience the pains of the devil attacking the closest people to you. You'll experience doubt and frustrations. Push, push, push your faith. Push your prayers. Keep praying until something happens. Did you hear me? Keep praying until something happens. Because God is able. God can change the circumstances of any situation. See, sometimes we get doubt in, in, because, you know, we prayed for a certain outcome and it didn't happen. And, and it didn't go the way we intended it to go. But let me tell you something. Paul was sitting in a prison cell persecuted day after day. Yet his conviction and belief in God never changed. Whether he was in a prison cell or in a palace. See, God is able. No matter what you're going through, he is able. God can't only do what we ask. But he can do even more than we even envisioned him to do. He's capable of doing exceedingly and abundantly more. See, God is able to interact with the laws of nature and suspend them. He's able to shut it down because he created them. He can take a body of water and separate it so that people can cross onto dry land. He can calm a storm by simply saying, quiet, be still. 
He's able to take the walls of Jericho and bring them down. He's able to take a small boy named David and allow him to defeat a giant named Goliath. Keep pushing. Keep praying. Something is about to happen. Push. 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 You are being birthed a new creation. You are being renewed in your spirit. And now you can have peace knowing that God is able. Keep praying. Keep praying because something is about to happen. The doubt you had in your head is gone. The attacks on your children are gone. The family member addicted to alcohol and drugs is being set free in Jesus' name. Your family was devastated by a loss, but God is renewing your hope and strength. Death does not have the last word on you. He is replacing your fears. He's replacing your depression. He's replacing your anxiety out of your heart and renewing your soul with love and empathy and kindness. You're not in control. God is in control. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but I'm everything in prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus' name. Keep pushing. And remember, the more you pray, the stronger your faith becomes. Open your eyes. Look for the sign God is revealing to you. Open your ears and hear the directions from your Holy Spirit. Keep pushing prayer and don't lose hope. Stay blessed and stay connected. Thank you.